The following program is a specialty program. Unless otherwise identified, the participants on the program are not employees of Chorus Entertainment. Opinions expressed may not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. And welcome once again, 1106 here, the uh, Pinpoint Health Show on Global News Radio. Set to go if you have some, some issues you're dealing with or just some questions about your own personal health. In these uh, very strange times as they continue, feel free to bring it on. Comments, questions, Dr. Lou is ready for it all. 416-870-6400, pinpointhealth.ca. Clinics are running. They are up. They are still helping people. Rest assured that you can still make that phone call and uh, carry on from uh, from that side. one 855 doctor Lou D-R-L-O-U is the way to uh, to move forward in that regard. Okay, pal, what, uh, where are we going this morning? Good morning. How are you? Good morning, John. I think what you started with in terms of what you just said about the clinics being open um, is something that I want to reiterate. I think what happened was when we, when the lockdown order, um, the stay-at-home order happened this week um, on, and I believe that was Tuesday, on the Wednesday, our clinics got an influx of calls for people wanting to book that day and on the Thursday before the lockdown um, and not realizing that healthcare services are not affected with this. Um, they can still operate as they were previously with obviously all of the right social distancing, um, you know, PPE and all that stuff. So I think that that's important. That's something that I really want to make clear to everybody listening, not just for Pinpoint Health, but healthcare providers in general. They are open. They're able to take care of you. And again, something that I have been saying from the beginning of this pandemic is stop putting your health on hold for a health problem. And that's not to minimize the impact of COVID-19, which is tremendous and is very dangerous and should not be taken lightly. But but at the that doesn't mean that you should take the other aspects of your health and put those on the back burner because this is at the forefront. You can't do that. Um, I unfortunately have heard all too many stories of things that have been, you know, delayed in terms of early screenings all the way to deaths that have happened because people are apprehensive to go to their health care appointments. And I think that's a very, very dangerous thing. And, and I want to assure everybody, um, you know, I can't speak on on behalf of every health care professional uh, in the province, but I think what I can say is none of us are taking this lightly. So we understand the seriousness of the virus, which means we are all doing our best to uh, ensure that if, if you need to come in, that you should and that you're going to be as safe as possible. And I, you know, people should go on and challenge the, the places where they're going. What are you doing? How often are you sanitizing? Most places will have um, on their website a detailed plan of what their co. COVID-19 protocols are. As an example, if you go to pinpointhealth.ca, uh, right at the top, you'll see a bar that says COVID-19 procedures and protocols. Mm -hmm. Please click on those, see the things that we're doing at the clinic level um, to make sure that we're keeping people safe. And, and, and that's a very, very important thing because the consequences of on health that will happen in the coming weeks, months, and years as a result of everything that's happened thus far are, are going to be massive they're just going to be absolutely devastating um i've i've seen things in terms of uh you know in terms of cancer screenings uh oncologists are expecting that in the coming years there's going to be an onslaught of, of cancer diagnoses and and shortages in terms of availability for treatment and different protocols and, and that's very very scary all because people are sort of uh putting off uh, their their healthcare and and this isn't just this doesn't fall just to the consumer of healthcare being patient also falls on some of the healthcare professionals out there that are being very laissez-faire in their approach and what i mean by that is i've heard too many stories of people that are calling their their healthcare professionals office and you know all they're doing is offering virtual care they're not getting responses they're not actually being seen and so there is a level of fault that be, needs to fall upon the healthcare professionals as well and so um you know uh, you can't sort of control what they're doing, but I would say if that is 
someone that you're dealing with, if one of your healthcare professionals is doing that, it, it may be in your best interest to try to find another opinion at this point. If you're concerned about something, there are alternatives out there. Um, and, I, and I think you should seek them. I, I think the idea of, of just not getting, and we've heard it on the show, John, we've had people yep. call in that have said, oh, I've tried to get, a, I think even you have an example with your wife. And, you know, there's all too many things where we've heard people say, oh, I've tried to get a hold. I've gotten no response back. Nobody's calling me. Another thing is like some people have just packed up and retired uh, because it's not worth the risk for them, which I get it. But w- when you have an influx of people doing that, what does that do to the overall health of Ontarians? Um, and that's a very dangerous thing. It's a bad thing. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm always wondering, I know that some political uh, leaders listen to the show or might come across um, uh, you know, they might be switching channels and they've heard me before, you know, I, I would love to speak with you on air. If you're listening, if anybody's listening to call in, not, not in a way to have an argument or anything, but just to, to sort of, maybe there's something I'm not understanding. Maybe there's, uh, something more to this, but it, to me, it seems crazy that, that we've almost essentially shut down healthcare in, because of a healthcare problem. Um, and John, you and I have talked about the other problems in terms of, you know, that this is really exposing a fundamental uh, problem uh, within the healthcare system and not necessarily creating one that, you know, if you look traditionally back at occupancy rates in ICU rooms, um, that's always been the case that they're that busy. And so we're just more aware of it now. But this isn't something that's new. This is we, we've been ill prepared for something like this for a very, very long time. And that's not to minimize COVID-19. COVID-19 is very serious because when you take into consideration that that shortage that is is historical that we have and then you add COVID-19 well you know no wonder they've got to do the things they're doing now or it can be absolutely disastrous because again people don't just get COVID-19 that that potentially gives them life-threatening complications there are a multitude of other health things that create that so people need these ICU beds for other things and and so I get it too I get the response um and and you know it's it's sort of reactive and and I think You know, at this point, maybe there's not much of a choice, but at some point we've got to look at this and be proactive with our health care. And so one of my messaging is some of my messaging around this has been, you know, you clearly can't rely on on a system because no system is perfect, not even the one that we have here in Ontario. So you've got to sort of rely on yourself to be proactive and take care of your health. And, And I've been speaking about this, too. I've been trying to reiterate this over and over again. Make good health choices right now, because that is what's going to be the difference in the future, potentially, when all of these consequences arise. So, you know, what are those things? Eat a healthy diet. And, you know, John, people are going to say, well, what's a healthy diet? And and my response is usually it's not rocket science. And I guarantee you everybody knows it, right? Like if I said, well, you know, you could eat, uh, you know, something out of a box or you could get something that, you know, grows out of the earth. Which one is better for you? And and I'm assuming, you know, 100 percent of respondents would tell you which one is better for you. So we know that a diet based in real foods, things that grow out of the earth or things that cut, that are natural uh, for you and anything that's you know, made in a factory, processed, uh, is probably not as good for you. We know that some level of caloric restriction is good for you, which means don't overeat. And we all know when over when we're overeating, right? Like if you've had one serving of something, that's enough to give you what you need in terms of your energy. Because at the end of the day, you eat for fuel. And, and anytime you're having the second, third serving, you're eating for psychology. And that those are two different things, right? So, so eat to what you need levels of activity so you know we know 30 minutes a day for three or four days a week um, has been shown to decrease all-cause mortality that's not something crazy i'm not talking about spending half an hour um you know at your maximum heart rate and, and, and going absolutely nuts i'm talking about this for some people could be as simple as a walk Right now, it's going to depend on what your overall fitness level is. Um, For others, it could be raking leaves. For others, it might be a light jog. So I think all of us know where we are. The the thing that I tell people is what you should be doing is exercising in that in that regard for 30 minutes and make sure you're getting to a point where you're sort of running out of breath. Right. So if you're able to have a conversation, if you're able to talk as clearly as I am now on the air and there's no you know, I'm not 
trying to get some air, then you're not working hard enough. Try to get to the point. And for some people, that might be walking. For some people, that might be a light jog. And those that are very active, that might be a sprint, whatever, right? It all very much depends. Try to get adequate amounts of sleep, seven to eight hours. And between those things and take care of your mental health, right? So, and, and, and you know, when you do those things, we know that that keeps people healthier. When people are healthier, they are less likely to not get illnesses, diseases, and if they do, they're likely to respond respond to them better. We've seen with COVID nineteen uh, that lifestyle diseases, things like high blood pressure, obesity, things that are very much in our control, uh, contribute very poorly to the outcome yeah. of COVID nineteen. That's not just the case with COVID nineteen. That's the case with a lot of things. So you know, what's my rant all about? My rant is essentially. Take care of yourselves. Be proactive in your own health. We all know sort of the right things to do. And, you know, I was doing a presentation this week, John, for a company, and it was sort of along the lines of of this conversation. And, you know, somebody asked me, said, you know, I have a problem with snacking. So every night I snack and I do things, you know, what do you recommend? And I sort of said, you know, sometimes I'm very hard line in my responses. If you know you have a problem, don't buy the snacks. Like it's yeah. sometimes it's that simple. Don't don't put it in front of you. Like it would be no different that if you were a recovering addict, you probably wouldn't put yourself around the thing you're addicted to. So, you know, we can just you can look at it in that way. If you're addicted to snacking, don't put it in front of you. Totally. Yeah. We'll take a short break and get right back to this conversation. Would love to have your input with this conversation as well because you, uh, we know you got one. Bring it on, 416-870-6400, info at pinpointhealth.ca to reach out by email as well. It's the Pinpoint Health Show right here, Global News Radio. And welcome back, 1119 Pinpoint Health Show. To reach out now, ask your questions, uh, join the conversation, please do. The show is for you. We are live. So bring it on, 416-870-6400. Reach out to info at pinpointhealth.ca. The clinics are open. They are serving people. They are doing what they do best. So make sure you contact Dr. Lou and uh, move on from there. You know, it's funny, that conversation you said about, you know, maintaining your own health to give yourself the advantage right off the hop and then, the you know, the to, to mirror that the healthcare system, I think we talked about earlier this week that there's it works out to about sixty two hundred people per ICU bed. So, could use a little revamping in this expensive healthcare system we got. I think after COVID, because I think it's exposed a lot of things, as you said, that were already there. So the homework is uh, is laid out for sure. Yeah, uh, well, that that goes without saying, and I mean, all of the it's not like this has ever really been hidden. I guess it's just not been at the forefront of everybody's mind because we've never had a health crisis like COVID nineteen. But you know, it, it, I just think back. Anybody can remember the term hallway uh, medicine, right? Where where mm. hospitals have people in the hallways uh, because they don't have enough room in the emergency rooms and things like that. And and we all know that we we've all heard that for. A decade, two decades, whatever it's been. Uh, politicians have talked about it. It's not like this is, has been hidden. It's just people didn't, you know, even potentially politicians didn't realize what this meant if there's a health crisis. And, and that's the problem. And that's where you've got to be proactive with trying to make as many changes. Now, listen, at the end of the day, there's no, I'm not, I'm not saying that this is a simple answer either, right? It's not like, oh, snap yeah. your fingers and make a difference. There's only so much money. There's only so many things. I get it. But, you know, that also, and, and I don't really want to go down this route because it's not the point of the show, but that brings up the, the conversation of some type of two-tier system, mixture of public and private. And does that potentially help um, offload some burden off the public system so that, you know, things like this. And, and, you know, I don't know, some people will swear that that's absolutely the wrong way to go. Some people will say that it's the right way to go. I'm not sure. I'm not saying that I'm smart enough to have that answer. I'm saying that we've got to really look at this. And, you know, one of the things that I think we, we do all too often is just accept dogma. We just accept whatever it is that someone else has said. And so, you know, one of the things in in sort of Canada and Ontario uh, being, you know, so well known for socialized medicine is anytime the conversation of private medicine gets brought up it's like you know it's the most taboo subject and and i'm not saying to go all the way to the other side where everything is private or anything like that because i don't think that um and you know when you actually really stop and and look at it as much as we want to believe that we have a fully public system we don't a lot of services are not covered by your by the right. government pay by the public payer. It's through private insurance. I mean, so there's there's a multitude of things. So we already sort of have 
a, a, a two tiered system. Um, and is there a way that we could maybe take it a step further that again can can make a difference in terms of being positive for everybody? And you know, again, I'm going to say it again. I'm not a politician. I'm not involved in government, so I I, I, I I'm not saying that this is a simple enough answer. I, I just think that too much of of what said is based on just an echo chamber but you know not to get into that because this show isn't really about the politics of healthcare. it's more about keeping you the listener um healthy and informed on the things that you could do so you know john when we got back from break you said this is a, a live call-in show that's my favorite part right i love the calls i love interacting with people and sort of um either whether it's getting their opinion on things that we're talking about or them asking me a question and seeing if i could provide any insight uh those are things i love to do so anybody listening if you've got anything health related uh give us a call um in terms of you know when we ended the last segment we were sort of talking about being as healthy as you possibly can which yes. um you know goes into sort of a springboard for me on one of the new things that i'm offering at the uh, in terms of my um care that i provide uh this is very much overall wellness this isn't necessarily diagnostic or therapeutic but i've spoken about it in the last uh, few weeks and months is the genomic testing where it can really provide a, a, a very good level of insight uh into your overall dna makeup essentially who you are and what that means for your health and and i've been really trying to relate this as much as possible to me to give the real examples that i know based on my genomic testing and sort of what i've done to really highlight this um and so there's a lot of things there and one of the things at this time of the year that's very real is people are trying different diet plans because you know the new year so they want to try to lose whatever weight they may have gained or maybe it's a new uh, because it's a new year, you have a new health goal for this year. And one of the things that I've talked about even before offering this genomic testing, and you and I have spoken about, John, is like yes. when when is the right diet for the right person? The beautiful thing with this genomic testing that we're offering is you don't have to really leave it up to a guessing game. And so, you know, just as an example, there's two of the genes that are tested. One of them will test how likely you are to gain weight with fat consumption, and the other will test how likely you are to gain weight with and starch consumption and the okay. beautiful thing there is depending on the answer that you get we might be able to say well then you should be on more of a vegetarian diet let's say you don't do so well with fats and you're much better with carbohydrates well then a, a vegetarian diet might actually be the benefit for you because we've we all know people who have gone vegan and it's like they've lost 40 pounds and it's like oh my god and then we also know as many people have tried it and actually gained weight well it might come down to the underlying genetics and then on the opposite side of the coin is the keto diet where it's high protein high fats and if you're someone who's not going to gain weight with fat consumption then keto may be the way you've got to go whereas right. you know i know for example john you've done really well with keto you you were able to shed a lot of weight and you didn't know your genetics you just happen to find the one i i would bet if we took your genomic testing that we would find that Which you don't gain weight with yeah. fat yeah um yeah. So I think that's really important. But where where I think this is important for people is so many people give up, right? Because you try something for two or three weeks, four weeks, you don't have an effect. And, and it takes longer than that sometimes. And this can really assure you, no, you're on the right path. Like, give it its fair chance. This isn't something that you can do for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, and expect to have the results. Like when you did it, John, with the keto, you're still doing it, and it's years now. It's got to be two or three years almost. Um, oh, and, yeah. and you've got to yeah, you you've just... got to stick with it yeah you just do it for months and let you know it's, it's funny you mentioned that about diets and people to get, uh, going in the short term looking for results i read the other day that if someone start the average person if they start when they're 18 the average north american will have go through 128 different diets in their lifetime trying <laughs> to find the right one that, that that's a massive yeah. number that's a massive yeah. number, you know? Yeah. 416-870-6400. That is the number to call through. Troy, thanks for uh, standing by, fella. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Yourself? Good. What's on your mind? Okay, so I will watch this Series 6. You know, it does the blood oxygen and all this stuff, you know? And But I found that I started to have – I normally suffer with migraines and sinus. And I found when I wear the mask more – I, I get more migraines. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, this is nothing to do with the people who wear masks and all this stuff, because as soon as you touch these subjects, everybody's like, oh, he's anti-mask and all this. But I found out when I checked the watch, my blood oxygen level, which was which is always 99, 100, was down to like 95. 
So I just want to know, can that be a factor? Like your blood oxygen level, can that be a factor in, in you having a migraine? You know, you get yeah. migraines going on? Yeah, great question. Um, so one of the things that's interesting about migraines is, you know, we don't exactly know for sure why migraines happen, but one of the more predominant theories um, that looks very good is it has to do with actually vascular issues and blood flow to the brain if you go down that path and you think okay well if someone's getting enough oxygen in their blood then that's a good thing and then if something causes that oxygen to drop and and migraines are related to a vascular issue then yeah it would create more or more lack of oxygen um more lack of a funny way to term it but anyways there would be a lack of oxygen getting so you know that that's an interesting thing it may very well be the possibility the the, the flip side of that is you know the difference between causation and correlation and and what that means is a lot of times people will do something and then they there's something else some in healthcare what we're always battling with is is something causing the other thing is a causing b or is a and b just happening at the same time and that and that is a little more involved and you've got to look at it more in depth but as an example with any type of headache even migraine headaches what we will often give people or patients uh, is a headache diary where you look at well what are the things that are happening when when your headache is happening so we're looking for triggers so it may very well be for you as an individual because i agree with you i don't think you're saying that you're anti-mask and i'm not anti-mask but you as an individual it may very well serve as a trigger um, to the headache. Yeah, now, this is very much me theoretically speaking. I'm not telling you something as a diagnosis. It's just yeah. we're having a conversation and we're trying to yeah. sort of work through this. So I, I don't think that your um, um, your hypothesis is necessarily wrong. At the same time, we don't know for sure. Yeah, because I would not like I know cheese and certain things trigger my like if I have peanut butter. I know there are things that trigger my migraines. You're right, stuff, right, right. Oh, right. So a lot of stuff that would normally trigger because it's not now that I've been having them, but they've been like baited off for quite some time till here of late. So I know once you start bringing up this, everybody's on you about, oh, you know. And we should have a, you know, you're right. We should have a conversation about the, uh, medicine and hospitals and, and how we how we deal with people, you know, because for too long, like, we be having this problem with hospitals and appointments. Like I, I, I got a CT scan, and it took me four months to get in to have a scan. That I was having my what, was that what, was that was that prior to COVID or during this is COVID? Prior to COVID. Yeah, exactly. And that and that's you know, yeah, that's a great that's a great example. That's what I'm talking about. We've already had like it's crazy that sometimes people that need things for certain like you know, where something like you're saying where it takes 4 months to get something that could be very important towards your overall treatment. Yeah. That that was already a problem before this. Before like and and that's what's crazy. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, the wait times for surgeries, for example, sometimes yeah. could be two years. Sometimes the wait time just to see a specialist could be six oh. months to a year, sometimes more. So the the underlying issue was already there. And so if people Correct. think that this is just a result of COVID, it's not. It, it's it's oh. a broken system. I'll give you a, I'll give you a good example. I had my, my doctor set up two appointments because I got an injury. And she set up two appointments with two specialists. And... <laughs> One person, I was able to see one in three months and have a surgery done, which she said to me, if you don't have it done, you would not be able to have the uses of that body part at all. The second one right. called me about eight months later to tell me, oh, your appointment is next week. Like, I already got the surgery. And the second yeah. one, eight months, eight months, I would have been without the usage of that part. But because wow. I should get the surgery. So this thing hasn't just started you know no. going on and, and we need to really and a lot of persons have unfortunately died waiting for help but we don't look at those numbers as well and you know it's sad you know and yeah. like here it re, re, it's not resurfacing they just took the dust off the cobweb off of the counter and just highlight it again but no my problem with it is now you're blaming us the public okay yeah you're not saying it's your fault you're not doing yeah. what you're supposed to do, and that is why I am a yeah. problem, and that is not true. That is not correct, you know. Yeah. So, but anyway, thank I, you for... Yeah, I was, uh, you uh, my pleasure. 
Troy, I appreciate the call. See, it's uh, it's frustration, right? So, uh, what are you going to do? I mean, that's 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 basically how you started this show was talking about people's I, frustration, and it's going to happen. Sean, I, I could tell you, mo- I think most people agree with me and you at this point. Like, you know, when you will some things where I go different politics and or, or or other accounts, and you know, when you looked at the comments in March and April, it was like these people are heroes, and then comments now and not one of them is positive like i think at some point you've also got to take into consideration what the public wants right like sort of our parents and you know there's a i I was watching my niece wanted to watch the karate kid yesterday and mr miyagi said there's it's only bad so you know there might be some reflection in that too right where maybe it's not just uh the bad public maybe leading the wrong way Let's take a uh, short break. Get right back uh, back into it here. The phone call, 416-870-6400. You'll want to reach out through email, info at pinpointhealth.ca, and also the website, pinpointhealth.ca, for more information as well. We'll continue with the Pinpoint Health Show right here, Global News Radio. 11.37, and welcome back to it, Pinpoint Health Show. Reaching out here now, 416-870-6400 to join the conversation for the remainder of the show. And you want to go to uh, info at pinpointhealth.ca is the email address to get a hold of Dr. Lou uh, and his crew. We'll move on to the uh, phone calls. Ayad, good morning. How are yeah, you? Good, good. How so, are you? What's yeah, happening? Just You know, I, I have concern, you know, because um, the waiting time for, like, you know, for scanning things. i waiting for six months to get colonoscopy, and I am diagnosed 20 years now with colon colitis. And everybody knows how bad is colon colitis. And then when I speak to my specialist, he talk on, on the phone with me. So how he can see me inside if he talk on the phone with me. So uh, I don't know how is that. How, what we well, do? Well, you know, I, I, yeah, I... Listen, I don't. I don't have an answer for you. I I, un, I actually agree with the concerns that you're bringing up. Uh, this is something that I'm hearing all too often, where people like yourself are saying, "How can you talking to me on the phone give you any information?" One of one of the programs that I'm part of is um, uh, for low back pain, uh, and I think I've spoken about this through the Ministry of Health. And you know, there's the option of doing. Um, the the assessments virtually. I, I've been doing them in person because to try to do a physical exam on someone's low back virtually, um, you know, outside of it not being perfect, not even close to perfect, is extremely time consuming and and all of these things. So I, I don't know what to say to you. I, I don't. I, I hear your concern. Um, I, I encourage everybody that has these types of concerns. You've got to call your your MPs. Um, and let them know that you know this isn't right. That that you know the idea of just being spoken to for your health over a phone call uh, is probably not the best way to go about this. Now, I'm also in favor of a hybrid system where sometimes that type of stuff works actually very well. A great example of that is you know if you go to your doctor, you get a test done, and the results are normal. Instead of having to go back, is it not good enough yeah. for the doctor to just call you and say, hey, everything looks good? So, you know, the hybrid system and the and the fact of technology and using other ways is definitely going to improve things. But for for the idea that it can all be um, taken care of, of over the phone or virtually. Um, yeah, it seems a little ridiculous to me, too. So I, I hear you. I don't I don't have an answer for you. And, I, and you know, you know, the fact that you've brought it on this yeah, public forum so more, one, so one, that one people can hear. If you yeah. allow, one more things, very small things. Uh, yeah. You know, the emergency room has been years and years for that. Even the politician talking about that, you know, and sometimes they score a point for, you know, uh, a nomination for election. You know, who did go to the emergency room even in the past, even before coronavirus, he didn't stay there for three, four hours until 10 hours until he get to get into an emergency. What's the different now? I'm not I'm not criticizing anything or minimize the problem of virus, you know, coronavirus. I know, you know, but people still need to go to emergency room, and they can. yeah yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. The emergency rooms are still open for other things. That that's an important thing. But I, I hear what you're saying. There's there was already a fundamental problem 
Um, and that sort of, well, you know, I, I don't know. And, and I think at some point there's got to be more proactivity on the parts of, of the of the leaders in these in these areas versus just being reactive to whatever's happening in the moment. But isn't that sort sort of the story of all of our of all the things that happen in society? It's always it's you know, people can see things coming down the line uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, and then you don't do anything until there's an absolute problem, um, you know, and, and this type of stuff, the the pandemic like we knew for we've all known for a very long time and if you talk to infectious disease experts they've been warning about this for decades and decades that you know at any point with the way the populations are are dispersed and the way you know we do things that there's always the potential for for this type of stuff you know proactivity would have been about hygiene social distancing should have been now you know like i don't want to say that you know there should have been campaigns about social distancing and not being able to do things but, you know, I think of something, for example, I, I'm watching a movie yesterday and I see somebody like a famous guy going up an escalator and shaking a bunch of people's hands and one to another, one to another. I mean, you know, those are the types of things that create disease transmission. And, and you know, maybe there is something to be said about, you know, not touching one another when, you know, in those types of settings. And, and maybe some things that if they change forever might actually be beneficial because it'll decrease the transmission of a lot of things. Yeah, you know, it's amazing, and a lot of it, I guess, is, um, to your point, social distancing and staying at home, but I, I actually know, I know it, it, it's not completely gone, of course, but I know very few people that have got a flu this season. Yeah, well, when I say social distancing, like, when I talk about this stuff, one of the things, and, and I got, you know, I don't know if you remember this, John, but this must have been maybe three, four months ago, I was speaking about that, you know, people that have symptoms like flu like symptoms are still exposing and then it ends up they have covid and they're exposing themselves to other I actually found out of a case like that through a personal connection where somebody you know woke up had sort of a runny nose uh, you know sort of mild symptoms that are associated with most viruses and that person assumed that it wasn't covid and so they still expose themselves to other and sure sure enough ends up being covid um and so one of the things that i've been saying is even prior to covid like you know if you've got those types of symptoms not not in covid let's rewind three years you wake up with those symptoms you know what it's on you to not expose others to that stuff anyways right, right? like that's how we d d decrease the transmission of any disease like if you feel like crap uh you know don't go into work and you know people so, so, sort of started giving me hell saying well who's going to pay if i don't go to work and blah 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 and all this stuff it's like i'm not telling people not to go to work for the rest of your lives i'm telling you that if the biggest economic impact on lost time of work in the western world is is cold and flus so if we minimize that then everybody will be minimized and the impact will be less for all of us over a period of time like sometimes you've got to think bigger than just your individual little world and that and that period of time you're trying to make a difference for everybody for everything and so you know that's the exact reason why say at schools right like if, if you're sending your kids in and, and they're sick again prior to covid well it's no surprise everyone else is going to get sick too that's right yeah let's take a short break more of your phone calls you still got some time so uh so bring it on be part of this conversation this morning of course 416-870-6400 and anytime you can go to pinpointhealth.ca as well it's the pinpoint health show global news radio Eleven forty-eight. Uh, welcome back, Pinpoint House Show. You want to reach out to Doctor Lou? One eight five 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 D R L O U. Doctor Lou. Info at pinpointhealth.ca. And uh, the Lou Down is a long-form podcast. You can uh, listen to those. Uh, the archive as well, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. So do that. But right here, right now, still got some time. Four one six eight seven zero sixty four hundred to call into this live show and uh, join the conversation. You have some uh, physical issues, some pain, musculoskeletal stuff. That's fine. Bring it on, Doctor Lou. We'll always here with some uh, some answers and or advice anyway you know it was interesting i was listening and reading earlier this week uh about actually it was from the i believe it was the ceo of pfizer who said guys you might want to be aware that this thing just might be in the community long enough to become endemic and you're going to need a vaccine every year like a flu vaccine so take care of yourselves i think is the general message there because this thing might never go away not to the degree we have it now but it might just be like that uh you know that uncle on that uncle that keeps coming over for christmas every year can't get rid of the guy it's a pain in the ass but you can't get rid of him <laughs> it might end up being like that from what the ceo said 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, again, not being a virologist or uh, an infectious disease expert or anything like that, I, I've sort of said this from March that I said, you know, we've, we've got to, once it was as widespread as it was, I sort of said, you know, at this point, we've almost got to take into consideration that this thing might just become another flu, right? Like so, yeah. something that is there, we've got to live with. And I think, you know, we've got to do the things like what, what things can we do? Again, for ourselves, the same things that you would do, you know, we, if you talk to ICU doctors, they will tell you that the people that are in hospital as a result of flus, you know, that end up going to ICUs are often people that are elderly, comorbidities, um, and, and, and outside of those things, because some of those things, like, you can't stop getting older, so that's a reality, so we've got to, you know, one of the fundamental things is that in all of this, we've got to do a better job as a community taking care of all, our older population, and, and the absolute track privacy in long-term care homes is an example of that. Um, so that's number one. And that, you know, I think out of 5,000 deaths that have happened um, in Ontario, which is a, you know, a tremendous amount and not discounting anything, the vast, vast majority, I believe almost 80%, are, are elderly uh, people uh, associated with some type of long-term care or congregated living. I mean, that that's absolutely crazy. We've got to do better for those people um, because we owe it to them. They're, they're the people that have brought us to where we are um, and will continue to do so. So I think that is number one. Um, and then, you know, understanding that if you're not in those vulnerable populations, uh, you know, even with flu and stuff, as I was saying, it was people who were otherwise were unhealthy um, and not taking care of themselves. So you can do things to take care of yourselves. If you're, if, if this scares you, then I think it should scare you straight into being healthy, right? Like it, you should take a minute and say, okay, well, what can I do for me, my family, my loved ones to be better, to be better for them, for me uh, and, and everybody. And I think a lot of people are trying that. And, you know, again, we started the show with this and I'll, and I'll sort of end the show as we move towards the end of the show saying again, health is achieved by having a healthy diet, which means, you know, eating things that are from that are natural, whether that's greens, vegetables, um, sorry, vegetables, fruits, meats, things like that. Understanding that moderation of everything is important. So you don't want to go crazy on any one thing. And you definitely want to limit as much as possible anything that's made in a factory, um, because that's probably not going to be ideal for us. Uh, another thing that's really important is, is sugars. Like we know that refined sugars are not good for us. So limit that as much as possible um we also know that moderate physical activity 30 minutes a day for three to four days a week who can't really fit that in uh john like you know what i mean like you could anybody can fit that in you know when it's incredible when you think about the amount of people that you know I, i've spoken to people who will say oh i don't have time for exercise meanwhile the minute you start talking about shows they've watched every show on netflix every <laughs> amazon prime show that you can imagine it's like well geez you found the time to watch all of those shows surely you can find two hours a week that's my recommendation split up over three or four days um to do something, to move around. Uh, you know, one of the things that people, I, I had some questioning, and I think it was even maybe it was a call on this show, was like, what's your recommendation for like kids? Like, get active with your kids, like do things together with them. I, you know, you're going to be the example for them. I, when I was working out this week, I, I sort of, I alluded to that my, my eight year old niece is staying with us right now due to a family situation. And, you know, I, I was working out, she sees me work out. And so what did she start doing? She built her own kids workout program. It was the Love cutest it. thing. Like she's throwing around pillows. Like it's, it's, it's silly stuff, but it's just getting her. It's creating that ideology Mindset. that, ex, that, that third, 30 minutes three or four times a day is important for her and she's doing it with me and i'm not forcing her every time it's like oh uncle luke can i come work out with you and it's like sure like come do whatever you want like i don't force her but if you're the example they're likely going to follow um and, and that's an important thing and then you know try to do things for your mental health right and one of the things that you and i spoke about this week john that i've been saying is like you know, everyone's stuck in their homes. That doesn't mean you can't step outside of your house or your apartment or whatever and get 20, 30 minutes of fresh air. Like, I know it could be cold, but just wear layers. It's important to get some fresh air in our bodies, not just the stuff that's circulated in your in your place of living. Like, you know, let's let's get out. Let's do some stuff. You know, you can still be well within all of the rules that have been imposed on us uh, and, and still try to be doing something for yourself. 
Well, how many how many times you know if you, if you spend any time on Facebook or Instagram, you've seen that meme saying you know if you haven't during COVID and the lockdown learned a new skill, started a side gig, or, or picked up something new, you've wasted your time. Here's a perfect time to do it. Learn how to work yeah. out. Learn how to do air squats. You know, grab a DVD. There's tons of stuff on YouTube you can do to to learn how yeah. to do a basic workout. I mean, like, this, this is the time you can do it, right? We all know the basic workouts because we did it in elementary school, right? Like, yeah. it, what would it take for everybody to say, okay, you start with jumping jacks, right? Like, and, and we're talking about I can give you a bunch of exercises that don't require you to ever have more than, like, a five-by-five five space. Like, start with jumping jacks, oh, right? squats right like free weighted squats push-ups crunches planks like there's there's a bunch of stuff running in one place skipping like these are all things i haven't said anything that requires a specialized machine it's not fancy but you can you can make a workout out of it right you can circulate it you can do different things with the with what I've said there, and of all of those things, like then, you know, as you start getting better, maybe you get into burpees, which is a combination of jump, squat, and push up, or you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so there are ways to do this that, that, although, you know, I, I'm, I'm a proponent for saying that we've got to open up the extent of healthcare again. So I, for me, you know, I consider what we do healthcare, of course, uh, but I also consider gyms healthcare uh, as an example. Right. And the and the, and the and the thought that those are shut down is crazy to me because that's what contributes for a lot of people. It's also their outlet. It's their mental health. It's like yes. they need to do this stuff. And you know, John, some people um, are at a level of fitness where you know just jumping in a five by five space is it isn't good enough, and and you might create things. So you know that that's uh, another conversation uh, for for a later time, I guess. But um, you know, in the meantime, there are things that we can be doing. And, and, you know, like, like I said, if you're one of these people that you're putting on this weight during COVID, I guarantee you, you're still buying the food that's contributing to that. So just cut that out, right? Like just make it as simple as possible and, and, get, and don't buy the stuff. Don't even have it around because if it's not around, uh, that's going to be a good thing. And, you know, some people say to me, yeah, but you know, I buy that stuff for my kids. Well, you know, guess what? It's probably not good for your kids either. Um, right. It's the reality. If it's not good for you, it's not good for them, right? So there are better ways to eat, exercise. That's what I'm telling everybody. Take care of yourselves uh, because clearly there are fundamental problems uh, that we have. Another good show, pal. Appreciate it for reaching out. If you if you did so, you want to do so now that we're off air, no problem. one 855 55 Dr. Lou, D-R-L-O-U, pinpointhealth.ca, info at pinpointhealth.ca through email. And the Lou Down is a long-form podcast. Lots of great stuff there as well. And we'll catch you next time in the Pinpoint Health Show, Global News Radio. The preceding program is a specialty program. Unless otherwise identified, the participants on the program are not employees of Chorus Entertainment. Opinions expressed may not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto.